I got involved in conservation because I want my daughter to have the same opportunities when she grows up that I did growing up. And in my mind, in the mind of MUCC, this is kind of cresting the hill of that slippery slope. And it's something people may say, well, I don't care about three months of coyote season. And it, it's so much bigger than that. I'm worried that this sets the precedent that's gonna result in my daughter not having the same opportunities that I did. Recently in Michigan, the NRC, or the Natural Resources Commission, which is our governing body over our game species method of take and bag limits, chose to close the year-round coyote hunting season for three months from April 15th to July 15th, citing unsubstantiated social pressure and social perception in their decision-making and limiting the access and opportunity for Michigan hunters to get out in the field and harvest coyotes and manage populations during that time frame. This is way bigger than coyotes for us here in Michigan because the commission in taking this action said that public perception was more important than sound scientific management. They weighed that public perception piece much more strongly. And they didn't even give any evidence about the public perception. They didn't have any data to back that up either. And when we stop following the science as a conservation community, or in this case, the commission, we, we run the risk of, of kind of losing it all. And it won't happen all at once. It'll happen incrementally with these small, you know, to some seemingly innocuous losses of opportunity. And by the time we realize what's happened, it could all be gone. Anti-hunters view all common methods of bear hunting as objectionable. And how long until we're staring down the barrel of people view bear hunting negatively? There are extremely good reasons why we need to manage bear populations. And we could lose that opportunity if we follow down this philosophy of social perceptions guiding our management decisions. We have to all pay attention. And whether you're a deer guy or whatever else you do, this does affect you because this is the start down the slippery slope to end up like a Colorado or a California where they've outlawed trapping. They're actively trying to take away all opportunity for outdoors men and women, and we're not going to let that happen here in Michigan. So obviously MUCC disagrees with this change that was just put forward by the Natural Resources Commission. We are actually taking action to file an appeal on that decision. This is gonna take time though. We're, we're now requesting the administrative record of the decision so that we can see basically what went into the Natural Resources Commission decision and also what might not be there. What we took to the commission was a few things. One you can never kill enough coyotes to have a population level impact. You'd have to kill over 90% of them. It's just not feasible. But you can locally reduce densities during these spring periods. And during these spring periods, removing coyotes from the population results in higher densities of game populations, deer, turkeys, whichever the case may be. So we took several hundred pages of peer-reviewed research with us to the commission, showed them what we had, cited the, the biologists that did the research, the, some of the conclusions that were drawn, and tried to lay out that this spring period is the best time to manage those coyote populations. Coyotes continue to flourish. They're in all 82 counties of Michigan. And if we stop for three months and give them a break for three months, I don't see how we can rationalize the fact that they won't grow or they won't overpopulate when during a year-round season, we still have had no population level effect. We've just been able to manage them locally, but as a species, they are thriving and we need to make sure that it doesn't affect the other things that we've put value on, our turkeys, our woodcock, our grouse. We, we know that raccoons and meso predators are a huge population issue for those ground nesting birds, for, for fawns, for other species. And we have to manage those too, but people just don't want to think of it that way. The coyote thing is just a microcosm of what's happening. You look at Colorado, who's probably the biggest one going, going through it right now, as it were, where their seasons, their opportunity are being eroded little by little. And if you, if you followed that back, went upstream from that, you're probably gonna find one little crack in the dam that nobody thought of. The worry is that this three month coyote closure is that teeny tiny little crack in the dam. It is a foundational, issue 
for our organization, for our outdoor heritage. If the NRC made a decision to close a season for a species that was in peril, we would support that decision if the science and the biology supported it as well. This isn't about free reign of everything and kill everything. This is about management. If turkey numbers were starting to decline and we needed to limit the season and the biology and the science showed us that this will help the turkeys come back, we would support the NRC in that decision. We would support the DNR biologist to say, hey, we need to make some changes now for the long-term health of a species so that my three children can enjoy that species when they're adults as well. This isn't us just not wanting the closure of a season. And so we want the NRC, again, to be back to their initial legal charge, their, their initial doctrine to say, hey, we are managing on the best available science and not just social and political pressures. What do we need as MUCC? We need members and we need donations. Um, that's really what gets these kinds of things done. The, the mechanisms that anti-hunting groups have is cash and lawyers. <laughs> and uh, both of those things uh, require people to give, to give generously, to, to understand that we will be good stewards of their money, that we're not being frivolous here. We do believe that there is a case to be made. We will be your voice if you do not want to use your voice, but we urge everyone to use their voice in a concise, meaningful, and respectful way so that they can understand who this affects and what it does to our outdoor heritage, and that we will not let this slide down the slippery slope of moving into social and emotional governance instead of sound biological science.